Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're connecting from. Uh, welcome to yet another uh, webinars, webinar from uh, the Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series. Uh, we have uh, Anuta Networks today, uh, who will be uh, demonstrating how their uh, network service orchestrator, which is the NCX, is going to really uh, turbocharge your application delivery. Uh, we have uh, Kiran from uh, Anuta Networks will be our main speaker. Uh, hi, Kiran. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, could you uh, give a brief introduction about yourself? Uh, hi, uh, hi, uh, Anil, and hi, everyone. Uh, this is Kiran Sirupa. I'm a senior product manager with uh, Anuta Networks. I've been with the company for the past four years. I'm really excited to explain how the Anuta solution helps uh, Citrix NetScaler deployments. Thank you, Anil, for this opportunity. Uh, th thanks very much, uh, Kiran. We are, we are very excited to have you here. And uh, I'm Anil Kumar. I'm, I'm the technical marketing lead uh, in the Citrix Ready program. Uh, I lead the network ecosystem. Uh, Kiran, could we uh, move to the next slide? All right, so, so before we uh, move on, uh, let me introduce a bit about Citrix Ready. Uh, Citrix Ready is an end-to-end -end technology partner program where we uh, showcase and recommend uh, third-party products, services, and solutions which are compatible on Citrix. Uh, so this helps customers make uh, easy purchasing decisions uh, when, whenever they buy Citrix and uh, are, uh, are looking for a third-party product which is compatible on Citrix. Uh, so all these products, once verified uh, by our technical team, as uh, published in, in the Citrix Ready Marketplace, uh, you could you could uh, visit the site at citrix.com forward slash ready. And if you are uh, if if you're interested to more about the Citrix Ready program and want to uh, want to enroll yourself, please uh, uh, please visit the uh, uh, link provided below. We'll be uh, sharing the slides at the slide deck at the end of the webinar. Uh, so uh, you, you could you could have a look. So uh, with, without any further ado, let me hand it over to Kiran. Uh, uh, Kiran, once again, thanks for uh, thanks for joining this webinar, and uh, it's all yours. Uh, thank you, Anil. So um, this this is the agenda for today. We will go through a twenty minute presentation. I will introduce the network service orchestration a little bit about our company, Anuta Networks. We will discuss some of the challenges that are faced in the application delivery. We will then define what network service orchestration is very clearly. And then we will go into details of Anuta's NCX solution and how it helps uh, accelerate network services. We will then go through uh, three different customer use cases, um, real life deployments. And then based on the available time, we will go through the demo as well. I am joined by uh, my, my colleagues, uh, Sri Devi. Sri Devi is a senior solutions architect with uh, lots of hands-on expertise. She is one of the panelists. And, uh, and also we have Chandra Manbutu, who is the director of sales operations. And both of them will be able to answer all the product as well as business related questions. So feel free to use the Q&A panel to ask your questions. And we will also stop in between the presentation to take to answer any specific questions as well. So let's get started. Um, so as I mentioned very quickly about Anuta, some of you may have heard us. Uh, we were uh, one, we were in P1 Best of Citrix Energy uh, a little earlier, but um, we are a uh, we are a global company uh, with headquarters in Bay Area, San Francisco, and we have global operations. Uh, our core focus is to deliver network service orchestration. The software we deliver called Anuta NCX automates network services for uh, enterprise and large service providers. We cover all the use cases in the enterprise, whether it's uh, data center, campus, branch, 
or the MPLS backbone network. And uh, we use uh, the IETF uh, YANG modeling to, to model the network services and that is our main differentiation when it comes to network services. We will go in more detail what is YANG and how it is helpful to automate multi-vendor infrastructure. So when we look at the current uh, industry challenges when it comes to application delivery, many of you uh, will be familiar with the diagram on the right. Whenever you need to onboard an application, typically the, the, there is a manual process or there is a workflow that you need to uh, you, you have like a ticketing system where someone submits uh, a, a workflow request, then the load balancer admin takes a look at it and then he has to configure the load balancer policies. Um, the firewall admin has to configure firewall policies, then IP address management, web proxy, certificate management. So there are so many teams involved to onboard one application. Because of this, the, it takes as, man, as much as uh, two, two to three weeks to deploy one VIP address for, for these large enterprises. And sometimes it can take months to onboard one production application because of the, the testing and verification as well as uh, hand, handoff between these teams. Now, when you are doing things in this manual process, uh, it results in inefficiency, obviously. It is expensive and also it, re it is vulnerable to human errors. And furthermore, every operator has their own way of doing things. So that means you have inconsistent method of operations across your, in your enterprise. Add to that, uh, the, the, the enterprises uh, grow organically. So that means you have multi-vendor infrastructure. You, pr you probably have uh, L2, L3 uh, switches from one vendor and then you, you have the L4 to L7 from Citrix. So because you have this multi-vendor infrastructure, you need expertise on all these, uh, all these vendor devices and it's not going to scale for you. Further, uh, there is a new trend to move towards virtualization. You have seen this, uh, the, you have seen the advantages of server virtualization and there is a promise from network virtualization as well. But right now, there is no clear path from your current physical infrastructure to the NFE or SDN infrastructure. That's another uh, main challenge for, uh, for application delivery teams. Network service orchestration solves these challenges. It introduces consistency and it automates multi-vendor infrastructure through a concept called abstraction. Because you are using an automated way, you, have, you, you will introduce consistency in all your operations. Because of the automation, it avoids human errors and it re reduces overall operating expenses. We have seen customers cut down as much as 70% of their operating expenses when it comes to uh, load balancer operations. We will go in further detail. That's a bold claim, but you will see how, uh, how it is possible through, through the model-driven abstraction approach. So let's define what network service orchestration is. As I mentioned earlier, whenever you need to onboard an application, you, are, you, you have to look at it as a sequence of steps. You, you have to, uh, the, all the configuration across multi-vendor infrastructure has to be coordinated. You have to create an access rule on the firewall. A VIP address has to be created on the load balancer. The routing VLANs are cre have to be created on the switches. If you are using a multi-tenant infrastructure, you need to create like a virtual route instances on the routers. So all of these things have to be done in a coordinated fashion. So that's what we call a network service. A network service is a, is a service chain of multiple network functions and as you see here in the, in the right, you have a logical diagram that explains the underlying uh, service chain for the particular infrastructure. So you are not thinking about the service 
in individual device operations. You are thinking about the service from the perspe perspective of the sequence of operations that needs to be done across the multi-vendor infrastructure. Now, if you are using a virtual appliance, it means sometimes you have to actually spin up the virtual router or virtual NetScaler instance on and activate the licenses and then start configuring the, the resources, uh, the VIP addresses and things like that on the NetScaler VPX. So a service is a combination of multiple network elements and, there's, and the steps required to onboard one particular application. So because you are using abstraction, you have a consistent way to define a service. So you remember the, uh, on the right side, it's a logical diagram. It can be executed on various combinations of physical infrastructure. You could have L2, L3 from Cisco, firewall from Juniper, and load balancer from Citrix. Or you could have L2, L3 from HP, and then firewall from a Palo Alto firewall, and then load balancer can still be Citrix NetScaler. So the logical diagram describes the service chain. And the orchestrator software will discover what you currently have in the infrastructure. It will understand various devices, what roles each of them play, what is the capacity of each device, and then it will lay out that logical diagram or logical service onto the underlying infrastructure. It will execute each and every um, command. So it will create the context on the ASF firewall. It will create the zones on the SRX firewall. It will create VIP addresses or route domains on the, on the load balancer. It will create VLANs, VRFs, everything to make sure the end-to-end -end service is active. Once the service is uh, provisioned, the, the software will constantly monitor this multi-vendor infrastructure and it will up, keep the service up to date. So let's say you want to add another real server, it will be as simple as creating a, 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 a VIP address in, in, the, in the orchestrator software and it will communicate with the underlying devices. So what this means is you are not directly communicating with the the underlying devices. You don't need to give the passwords of NetScaler VPX. You don't need to give the passwords of the firewalls. Everything is done from a, a consolidated user interface and you can introduce role-based access control, workflow, and auditing to ensure the, the integrity of your infrastructure. So again, the bottom line is because you are using abstraction and you are doing this across multi-vendor infrastructure, you introduce consistency and you no longer have to learn the CLI or API of each individual device. So that cuts down your human uh, uh, involvement when it comes to day-to-day -day, uh, CLI or uh, syntax operations that avoids the human errors and that ultimately reduces the overall operating expenses. So we spoke about what orchestration is and how it is different from traditional automation. We will now go into Anuta's NCX solution. We will discuss the architecture of the product and how, and how it uses the Yang models I mentioned earlier to, to achieve the benefits of orchestration. Uh, this slide captures the, the overall value proposition of Anutas NCX. As I mentioned earlier, organizations are going through a change. They have lots of legacy infrastructure, but they are also trying virtual appliances, and there is a push for moving towards SDN and programmability. So as enterprises are making this transition, Anuta sits on top of the legacy infrastructure, NFV, as well as SDN, and it provides a technology agnostic layer to the business. So you have one consolidated uh, uh, management solution that is Anuta's NCX that can work with your current infrastructure as well as your future infrastructure. So it helps with investment protection for, you, for you, your uh, multi-vendor infrastructure. You don't have to rip and replace your current infrastructure with for SDN. We will discuss uh, in more detail how exactly this works. Here is a uh, detailed architecture diagram and how NCX fits in with your, with your ecosystem. As you see here, everything in, in blue color is the NCX software. It sits on top of the phys physical or SDN and NFV infrastructure. 
and the NCX communicates with these devices using their native interfaces. So if a device has netcon for Yang, it will use the netcon to communicate. But if the device doesn't have Yang, we have developed the adapters that can communicate using either CLI or APIs. Uh, we, it also uses SNMP to monitor the devices and continuously keep the NCX policy consistent with the underlying infrastructure. NCX in, in, in integrates with your existing enterprise software, whether it's your certificate management, image management, license management, virtual appliances. If you have, if you have like OpenStack, um, we can integrate with that. Um, any analytics software, as well as assurance platforms. When I say NCX integrates, it means NCX can consume information from all these sources as well as contribute information to all this, soft, uh, this software as well. The, the overall NCX platform has a comprehensive REST API that, that can be used to integrate with your existing ticketing systems like ServiceNow, or if you have VMware, vRealize, or ScienceLogic, or any other uh, ticketing systems can be integrated using our REST API. As well, and we will also provide the SDKs uh, to get you started. And NCX itself has a GUI which can be used for uh, for day-to-day -day operations as well. And the entire software is aware of multi-tenancy, so you can introduce role-based access control and have different use for security admins versus uh, load balancer admins versus, versus routing uh, operators. And in, internal to NCX, it uses Yang models, and it, it is integrated with an external database. We support Oracle or uh, uh, SQL databases. And all the Yang models, which are similar to an XML file, are stored in this exist, uh, external database. So it gives you persistency, even if NCX were to crash, uh, the new instance of NCX, which is delivered as a virtual appliance, will be able to uh, recover from, uh, from the Yang model files. So all the services are described in Yang. So a service could be something like onboarding a, a sub, an application onto a layer 4 to layer 7 infrastructure. A service could be configuring L2 VPNs, config, uh, configuring DM VPN, or interconnecting multiple branches to the data center. Uh, like that. So a service is nothing but a chain of uh, network functions defined in Yang with all the constraints. So NCX is agnostic to the underlying service. So you can use Yang to describe any sort of service chains, customize it to your own uh, deployments. That's why we claim that NCX can support any vendor, any platform, any service. And we have the, the device models for uh, more than 35 industry leading vendors and 100 plus 100 plus different uh, platforms. Uh, so we discussed uh, the platform. We will go in more detail what exactly um, is supported. So these are some of the logos of the vendor devices that are currently supported. We have developed the device adapters for all these vendor devices. Uh, this full list is also available on our website. Uh, specific to Citrix audience, uh, Netscaler, MPX, SDX, as well as VPX are supported. We support the virtual appliance lifecycle management for Netscaler VPX as well. And as you can see, majority of the uh, leading vendors, including Cisco, Juniper, F, um, FI, Citrix, as well as Fortinet are supported. And when it comes to, uh, when it comes to L OpenStack, we support the DevStack release, we, uh, the Kilo release, and we also support uh, uh, Red Hat and Mirantis uh, OpenStack as well. So, and this list continues to grow. We are going to add as uh, as NCX is deployed in more and more customers. We will continue to add support for these uh, various devices and vendors. Um, here is the full list of Netscaler platforms that are supported, uh, in the, including the actual releases. We have validated NCX con commands and configurations across these uh, various vendor platforms. Apart from provisioning the services, the, the platform has the smarts to continuously monitor the infrastructure 
and it will reconcile the configuration with the underlying infrastructure. If anyone manually goes out outside of NCX and deletes any configuration or, or adds something to the, to the devices, NCX will be able to detect that change and it will provide an option for the operator or, or the administrator to recon reconcile the infrastructure. So that means NCX can recover any configuration that was deleted manually or NCX can add uh, the um, add a new configuration that, that was missing from the devices. And because of this, the NCX policy is always consistent with the underlying infrastructure. This will uh, help during any compliance operations. We can generate compliance reports that shows you uh, who have changed the, the configuration and wh what does NCX uh, think of that configuration and it can push the configuration back to the device as well. We also have auditing, so you can review all the changes that are done as part of the application uh, and, and that can be stored for uh, forensic purposes as well. Uh, NCX uses a distributed uh, server agent model and it scales horizontally to hundreds of uh, uh, different uh, locations and thousands of devices. We will uh, share more details as part of the customer use cases uh, about the deployment details. So a little, a little bit about Yang. Um, Yang is the industry standard uh, modeling language. It, it has most recently gained a lot of adoption across the vendors as well as customers, very large service providers and large enterprises like Google and Facebook have also started adopting the, the Yang models because it gives them the flexibility to work across multi-vendor infrastructure and define the application policies independent of their device capabilities. So in future, they can replace one type of switch with another switch without changing any of their workflows. And the, uh, as you can see, many, many Yang models are already published on, in IETF and NCX it works with all these standard uh, Yang models, so you don't have to develop them. And this, as, as IETF continues to publish new Yang models, they will be compatible with NCX because we are using the standards uh, implementation. Uh, so this, this is one detailed slide about Yang. Uh, as you see here on the left, the diagram, we have separated the service logic from the device logic. The top portion describes the service model. The service model explains the intent of the operate, of the administrator, like how the service should be deployed, what is the service chain going to be. Now, the service chains we have out of the box we, for all these uh, various scenarios. However, we are uh, confident that they don't match the, uh, they don't match all of your requirements. So that's why your DevOps teams uh, can actually extend these service models by developing business logic and customize it to your own workflow. You, you may have your own way of configuring uh, different policies. The, the naming of the VLANs could be different or, the, uh, uh, or the, the way you go through a approval process could be different from what we imagine as, as company. So you are able to customize these services Without, a need, without the need to understand the device uh, details. So this custom business logic is developed against a normalized device model. So the normalized device model is, is sort of like abstraction. So it has um, normalized commands like create VLAN, create a VIP address, create firewall rule. It doesn't tell you a, the actual commands to create them, but the business logic can be written at the abstract level. Once the, uh, once the business logic is written, NCX will convert that normalized uh, device models to individual vendor devices. So here, for example, the normalized device model will be, say, create a VLAN. We have the concrete mappings for all these vendor platforms, and it will be converted to the exact CLI for creating a VLAN. And in Juniper, it could be the netcon configuration to create a VLAN. So we are shielding. The, the DevOps team or the admin team 
from the underlying infrastructure. They don't need to know the, the syntax of the checkpoint or the Palo Alto or Cisco or Juniper. All they need to know is create a firewall route. So that sort of uh, abstraction speeds up the process, avoids any any errors and uh, and vendor lock-in as well. And in future, as YAM gets more adopted more widely, the uh, NCX can directly talk to the device using the YAM model that is published by the device itself. In that case, you don't need to go through this translation. So this is how we support the current infrastructure, which doesn't have YAM but has only CLI or NetConf because we have developed the device adapters as well as future uh, platforms which have Yang or NetConf uh, uh, going forward. So we support current as well as future infrastructure. So let me pause for a moment and see if there are any questions. Maybe, maybe I haven't covered everything. So Anil, uh, are there any things to discuss? Uh, we, we have one question, uh, Kiran, yes. Great, great presentation, by the way, uh, going on. Uh, so, so you did mention that uh, uh, NCX is going to uh, uh, detect all these uh, device uh, appliances from various vendors. Uh, so, uh, so to do that service discovery, will there uh, will, it, will it will it require any agents to be installed? So, so the question is how how does NCX discover the services? Um, so, NCX doesn't need any agent on the individual device device. The NCX uh, discovers the devices using standard protocols like LLDP, SNMP, or CDP. You can also import that information manually into NCX as a one-time activity. So we do not need any agent on the devices. That is one of the main advantages of NCX compared to other automation platforms. Uh, you don't need any any agent on the device. In fact, we have worked with uh, some legacy Nortel switches, which which doesn't have any agents, and just using CLI, we are able to communicate with those devices. Right, great, awesome, awesome Kiran. Thanks very much for that. I, I think we have we can take uh, the remaining questions uh, at the end of the webinar. Okay. So yeah, all of these things will come together in the demo as well. So let's uh, let's hold on till till the end for other questions. So very quickly, I will I will walk you through a couple of use cases, and then uh, we'll go into the demo. So some of the major use cases we've seen from our customers, uh, very large financials and service providers, as well as uh, universities and IT companies have deployed NCX. Uh, in the data center, as I've been speaking, multi-vendor is very common and uh, virtual appliances are coming into picture. And uh, all the use cases like onboarding applications, firewall as a service, micro-segmentation, load balancer as a service, um, interconnecting private clouds with public clouds, all those use cases are coming up. In the, in the remote branch environment where, where you have uh, legacy branches as well as SD-WAN and virtual CPE. We, we have support uh, for more multiple vendor uh, platforms, including Cisco's uh, Cisco iWAN, and we support zero-touch deployment uh, for the branch uh, networks. And further, we also automate the campus operations, so whether you are onboarding uh, employees, guest networks, uh, VPN, as well as wireless, all these access policies can be modeled using NCX and automated across multi-vendor Cisco, HP, Juniper infrastructure as well. So we will go into each of these uh, customer segments and one use we take one use case in each of them. So I've been mentioning this. You've seen it in the earlier slide. Uh, this is a popular use case in a private cloud or data center environment where you have you are onboarding an application which requires configuring multiple devices including load balancers like netscaler firewalls like juniper srx and then virtual switches and virtual firewall virtual routers as well and we have we have day zero provisioning support so that means let's say when you onboard a new switch you can model that switch and you can push the template 
to hundreds of switches using that same template. We also have day one to uh, day end configuration. So onboarding new applications, adding new WIP addresses, changing app, uh, firewall rules, adding new containers uh, and segmentation. All of those things we can introduce service and from the simple GUI, you can automate configuration across multiple vendors, including Cisco, Juniper, Citrix, uh, VMware, and etc. So you, you as a network admin, you're going to expose one consolidated user interface to your operators. This consolidated user interface has all the, um, all the devices, whether it's load balancers, firewalls, IP address managers, and things like that. Everything is consolidated into one UI. Now, operator submits that, and NCX behind the scenes will convert this UI into individual commands. This uh, greatly speeds up the overall uh, operating process and avoids any human errors. And there is a consistent way to do this across different vendor infrastructure, whether the infrastructure is, is in Cisco or Juniper or HP, it doesn't matter. You are providing a consolidated interface to your operators. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, we have done this case study for a large enterprise. Uh, their main use case is that they create uh, applications, WIPs, and uh, they keep changing firewall rules. So they've, they've seen as much as 75% reduction in their day-to-day -day activities because they introduced uh, uh, self-service and, and the automation in their infrastructure. This sort of uh, uh, savings are possible in your branch infrastructure as well. In, in, in the branch, you can, you can introduce more savings by intelligently doing the traffic steering as well. So NCX is proven uh, in multiple production uh, scenarios to deliver uh, um, OPEX savings. Uh, we have just two more use cases and then we'll go into the demo. So as I mentioned, NCX is agnostic to the actual service. So we have customers who have deployed NCX to automate their remote branch environment. Branches could be legacy physical devices, could be SD-WAN type of devices. There's also a new trend called virtual CPE where you're combining virtual firewall, virtual router, virtual WAN optimizer to offer a CPE service. And NCX is also deployed by many service providers who, who can manage hundreds of enterprises using the same software instance. And all the day zero to day end configurations, such as adding routes, adding uh, traffic policies, performance routing, policy-based routing, um, all the Cisco IVAN policies can be automated using NCX. Uh, final use case is the campus environment where you are onboarding uh, students or employees or guests or vendors. NCX will do end-to-end -end segmentation between the campus infrastructure and the data center. And it will help with any switch uh, switch policies, whether you want to um, whether you want to add security policies to a switch, configure VLANs on a switch. You don't have to do that manually. You can do everything from a simple GUI, and you can empower your operators to manage their individual department uh, infrastructure. So this is another production deployment that we have for the campus infrastructure. So now let's uh, take a minute to, to go back to the product demo. Um, I will be sharing the product UI. Uh, let's, let's pick that up. OK. so. So this is the, the NCX GUI. Uh, there are three components to it. One is resource manager, which basically discovers all the infrastructure. As you can see here, this is a very simple demo setup. We have one VPX, Netscaler VPX, and one Juniper SRX, and an Infoblox IP address manager. So this is a very simple topology. Uh, we can also see the graphical representation, but NCX can detect hundreds of devices and identify their roles as well. So once NCX detects the devices, then you can configure IP address management, uh, VLANs, and things like that as part of NCX. But it can also integrate with external IP address management managers as well. As I mentioned earlier, um, 
everything in NCX is driven by Yang models. For example, here is a Yang model. Um, as I said, in Yang is very similar to XML. Uh, it describes the, the service using uh, attribute value pairs and all the conditions, any constraints related to that, uh, uh, that value pair. So we have already imported this particular, uh, serv this is called a service model. It's already imported into the product. But if you were to change something, you want to, let's say, um, you want to add one more uh, attribute, you can do that. Let's say instead of, uh, we'll take one simple example. Instead of doing uh, round robin, you can say, you can add something like most recently used as well. So, so you can continue to add options. So you don't need to wait for Anutas to come back and update the, the service models. When you create a service model, you can actually import them. Uh, as you can see here, we have all the device models imported, Cisco, Avaya, Citrix, HP. Uh, but we also imp imported the application delivery service model that I just created. This is this service model. I'll go in more details on how the service model will look like, but the main point is that you can easily extend the service model by editing the, the Yang file and re-importing it. It's as simple as adding a package and you can select the zip file out of it. So once the service is defined, then you can, you can look at the service definition, um, for example, applicant services. We have defined a load balancer profile uh, that was that is defined by the admin so he can cr create multiple profiles. So for example this is a simple load balancer profile. Uh, it says use round robin. So as you can see here the drop down here corresponds to the enum values we entered. So if I were to re-import this new package or new yang file your operator will now have the third option. So like that, you can customize the entire GUI that you expose to your operator. Uh, the entire platform will auto-generate the GUI from the YAM files. So that gives you tremendous flexibility to customize the, the operations and the parameters. Uh, you can constrain them, you can put default values or you can uh, expose uh, new values to your end customer as in when new parameters come in. You don't need to wait for Anuta to give you a new software patch. This is one of the main advantages of, uh, of going with a, a model-driven platform. So we define the load balancer policies and then an application service, uh, we are going to define it as a combination of uh, a load balancer, a firewall, and an IP address manager. Okay, looks like uh, it's taking a minute to get it, so I'm going to access it from here. So, for example, we we already created some applications using this uh, this set this this container. Now we can continue to add new applications. So let's do one simple application. Uh, here is my Citrix NetScaler VPX. Uh, these are all the VIP addresses or virtual servers that are already created on this NetScaler. So as part of this service onboarding, we are going to onboard a new application. So Anil, I'm going to name my app on your name, Anil App Policy. This is going to use HTTP protocol. And we can choose a web address. It's a, again, this, this web pool can be extracted from IP address manager like, a, um, like info blocks or they is, can also be part of NCX. Let's pick some port. And for our, our server, let's give something easy to remember. Let's say 5555. So what we are doing here is we are providing all the parameters for all the devices in one consolidated form. So firewall, the SRX firewall, for example, the firewall rules you are providing them. As I said earlier, this can all be constrained using the Yang model. Um, let's choose one, and FQDN, I'm going to say something like this. 
and the register A record, these are the parameters for info blocks. So all of this is defined by the, the network admin uh, as to what they should be entering in the in the in the YAN model. So so everything is controlled by the network admin, what the operator should enter. So now we are going to submit this request uh, for Anil's app policy. So it's going through the process. Let's take a look at the creation process. Uh, right now it's at 5%. It's going to discover the capacity of the infrastructure to make sure it has the uh, availability across uh, the SRX firewall and the Citrix load balancer. And looks like it's currently waiting for us to review the configuration. So when we look into it, you can see that uh, these are all the abstract level information, like what we want to push. But it also shows you the exact commands. So these are the SRX uh, rules, for example, the firewall policies. And these are the uh, Netscaler APIs that it's going to push. So now we can have this uh, approved by the admin or different security teams, networking teams, and uh, load balances teams can approve or reject it. So let's say approved by admin. And then you have the option to, um, uh, to schedule it right away, or you can schedule it later on at, at a maintenance window as well. So now the, the creation is in progress. It's going to push that, uh, that WIP address, the, the Anil IP WIP address, to the Netscaler VPX. And OK, now it's creating a context on the SRX firewall as well. Now let's look at the, so it is already done with the Netscaler VPX. So we can, we can now refresh the Netscaler VPX. And we can see that Anil app policy, the R server with the, with the virtual IP is already created on the Netscaler VPX. So this is the, the 5555 is the configuration we created. Similarly, it would, it would have pushed the configuration to the SRX as well. So in the interest of time, I'm, I'm only showing you the Citrix Netscaler uh, configuration. So now let's uh, let's do one one other uh, another thing. Um, we are going to manually delete this virtual server from Citrix Netscaler. So this is happening outside of NCX. So so we are going to delete the virtual server. So we don't have the Anil app policy anymore. Now let's go back and let's go back to our devices. Um, NCX has a concept called uh, inventory. So you can you can run an inventory job that's going to trigger um, consolidation between NCX policy and the device infrastructure. So this can this can be scheduled on demand or you can also have it on a periodic basis, like every five minutes. But in the interest of time, I have triggered a, an inventory task. And NCX is going to now compare its policy against the actual infrastructure. And it's going to say, um, it's going to parse the VPX configuration. And it's going to say some, something like the device is out of, uh, out of compliance. And we, we get to push the configuration back onto the device. So as you can see here, it's currently waiting. It's, it, has, it has found some issue. Let's see what, what issue it has found. So it's going to show you the main difference uh, between the device and the NCX configuration. We should see Anil's policy here. So it says the device has deleted Anil's policy. So now we have two options. Maybe that was intentional. Uh, in which case we say overwrite NCX policy. But let's say it was not intentional, it was a mistake, and I want NCX to overwrite the device configuration. So I can select that and say overwriting the policy, the device changes. So when I put this one, NCX is going to push the, con NC the policy back onto the Citrix Netscaler. So this makes sure that the NCX policy is always consistent with the underlying infrastructure. So now it's uh, it's communicating back to the in the we going to push the configuration. So you can also model this, and you can say for all firewall rule changes, 
NCH is the master of the policy, so that means the admin doesn't have to take any action. NCX will automatically push the configuration to the firewalls. And you can review the configuration. So like I said, audits, you can see what were all the commands that were pushed. Uh, who pushed it? We have role-based access control and things like that. So let's go back and see the net scaler. By now, I think it will push the Anila policy back again, right? So that's that's pretty much the demo for today. We we showed you how NCX discovers the devices, the operating system it's running, how you can update the packages, import them back onto the system, and how you can order new applications, a simple uh, consolidated form, and you can con you can configure uh, multiple vendor devices. And we also went through the reconciliation process as well. So for a more detailed demo, please contact us uh, uh, as well. And we would love to show you uh, more advanced use cases as well. So let me get back to the presentation. And here is the final summary of, this, of the presentation. When you are using orchestration, you are introducing consistency. And you are avoiding human errors and you are able to do all of this at a lower operating expenses as well. So orchestration cuts down your overall application delivery time. Here are some additional resources and we also have we will also be hanging out on, on the webinar for some more time. So feel free to um, chat with us or ask any questions. So Anil, that concludes my presentation and demo today. Uh, so we can take any questions at this time. All right. Th thanks very much, uh, Kiran. That was a wonderful presentation, uh, and I'm glad the demo also worked out really well. And uh, have to comment, uh, NCX has a very great dashboard view, and uh, and I think the user interface is very uh, very easy to use. Uh, and and the and, and the biggest advantage I see is uh, administrators won't really have to spend a lot of time uh, to learn CLI commands from various appliances. Uh, so, so that saves a lot of time, and I'm and I really like the uh, embedded workflow model where you could really approve or or decline or even override the changes, uh, and the way uh, NCX can uh, consume information from uh, from any existing licensing and ticketing models, and 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 I'm, and I'm pretty sure with uh, with the numerous uh, vendors available in the market right now, being uh, vendor agnostic is very uh, is extremely helpful. Uh, so overall, uh, an awesome product, and I'm sure our, our audience really, really enjoyed uh, the webinar today. Uh, so so let's uh, let's move on to the question question and answer session. Uh, we've we've, re we've received some uh, some really good questions here. Uh, so so let me uh, take the first one. I, th I think this was uh, one of the statement uh, made uh, that NCX supports uh, networks on a massive scale. Uh, so one of our audiences would like to know uh, so what so what's the number how many services or devices or nodes can it support? So um, so when it comes to scalability, we we use a microservices based architecture and a distributed design. So what that means is we have the central controller that takes care of all the policy information, but each individual agents will do the hard work of configuring devices. An agent can configure as much as 1,000 devices. An agent is a virtual appliance with a 4 GB RAM and a 20 GB hard disk, and it can communicate to thousands of devices. So this uh, design by itself scales horizontally. We have production deployments up to uh, 15,000 uh, switches and uh, routers. Uh, and the and we have tested up to 50,000 devices in our lab. But the production we have up to 15,000 uh, switches, routers, and load balances together. All right, perfect. Uh, one more question: uh, How can NCX protect and uh, secure such incidents of applications uh, being deleted? I, I think this was uh, being referred to uh, what you showed in the demo. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so we have shown you the Yang model, right? So NCX has a has a notion of what a service should look like end to end. So it knows that if there is a rule on the firewall, it's probably created 
for an application that means there should be a zip address there's a server on the load balancer too so it, it is comparing the device configuration across across multiple vendors with the service model you have defined in the always make sure that the service is consistent so even if someone manually deletes accidentally or intentionally NCX can push the config back and make sure the service is in a consistent stage and going forward we are introducing uh, performance based metrics as well as service valid validation so that means we can do end to end ping for let's say it's a VIP address we can do end to end ping to make sure the configuration is in is uh, indeed correct right perfect uh, so one more question. Uh, so uh, so most of our audiences would like to know. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure they love the product, and uh, uh, they would like to know if there's a trial version available uh, of the software, and and if it could be used for free. So uh, right now we have a restricted beta going on, so it's not available to download from the website. But we'll be more than happy to uh, work with you. Please uh, reach out to us. Uh, you can reach out to us on our website. There is a contact us button. You can submit your request. And we promise you we'll get back to you within within eight hours. And we will uh, let you know how the trials instance can happen. Uh, great. So limited uh, beta version and, and to reach out to you if, if, if uh, the trial version is required. Awesome. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure if you'd like to uh, take this question uh, here in this forum, but uh, a couple of uh, audiences would like to know how, how does the pricing or the costing work? So yeah, I cannot give you the specific uh, dollar figures, but I can tell you the pricing model with NCX. Uh, we we have like a base platform fee and then on top of it the the pricing goes based on your infrastructure so the more number of devices and the type of devices you add the pricing increases so it's it, it we we offer both the perpetual as well as subscription and pay as you grow licensing for more details it's better we con we discuss offline and we understand your use case as well all right uh, uh, so one more uh, very good question here. So so uh, so big enterprises will uh, will obviously have uh, thousands of devices and and various models available in their data center. So so how can uh, uh, one know if 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 a particular model or a device is supported uh, by NCX? So um, we are constantly updating the website with which models are supported under resources section of our website, you can see it. Another important thing is we will continue to add new releases when we are a technology partner with all the leading industry vendors. So let's say, for example, Citrix, right? We, we get an email from Citrix ready team that, hey, this new version, let's say version 12 is coming up. Then we have the, we add version 12 to our roadmap and say by the time the, it comes to the GA release for Netscaler, we will already be validating it. So we will continue to support new releases. And as I showed you earlier, the support is done through a Yang model. So that means customer themselves can add, let's say it's a simple change and you don't need to wait for Anuta to make that, that release available. You can actually do that. Or you can work with a system integrator who is more, uh, more uh, familiar with Yang and they can build a device model for that as well. Let's say you have a very, uh, uh, very, um, the very old device or something that is not uh, that popular and maybe Anuta doesn't want to support that particular specific vendor, in which case uh, you can work with your system integrator who can actually develop the Yang model and make it compatible with NCX as well. All right, so so we are running out of time, but let me let me take one quick question uh, before we wrap up. Uh, so so uh, uh, which which databases are supported uh, with with NCX? So um, I mentioned earlier, uh, Oracle external database is supported as NoSQL and. Uh, Postgres are also supported. For NCX internal usage, it uses MongoDB as well. 
All right, awesome. So, so there are some more questions uh, coming in, but we are uh, unable to take them uh, due to uh, due to the time constraints. Uh, we will definitely get back to you privately, uh, answering all your questions uh, without uh, without fail uh, through emails. Uh, also, I see many attendees asking uh, if the slides and the recording of this webinar would be uh, made available. Uh, to answer the question, yes, uh, we will share the recording with uh, all the attendees uh, within a day or two to your uh, registered email addresses. Uh, and with that said, we are uh, about to end, end today's webinar. Uh, I want to take a moment again and thank uh, Kiran uh, for making this fantastic presentation and demo and uh, sharing great insights of uh, NCX and uh, net network orchestration with us. And uh, last but not the least, I want to thank each and every one of you who are who have attended uh, this webinar today, uh, the Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series, and uh, uh, this shall conclude the broadcast today. Thank you very much.